Hi everyone, today I'm going to try to make a tank and poly bridge. Now I really have no idea exactly what I want to do with this, I just want something that can traverse some rough terrain and also have some sort of weapon on top, but I really don't exactly know where I'm going to go with it. So yeah, I'm just going to try a few things out. So the first thing I do is test this in Unbreakable mode because, well, there's no way it's going to work off Unbreakable mode as you'll see in a moment. I also made a bridge here, and this is just a simple design, and I want to just test to see if roads can interact with other roads. Here I'm making a wheel just to see if it'll work, and, well, it doesn't, they go right through each other. I was like 98% sure this was the case, but I just wanted to test before I over-engineered some solution. So I got rid of that, it was only for some testing. And I'm expanding out the main islands, and I'm making a new wheel design. And this one's going to be similar to the one I made before, where it's just this octagon shape as the inner ring. But the difference is this has an outer ring as well. And it's kind of dumb, but I'm going to be stuffing sports cars in between these two layers of roads, as you'll see. And the reason for this is that cars have collision with other roads, or they have collision with roads. By putting sports cars in between these two layers of the wheel, they'll interact with the bridge and they can interact with the wheel, so it should be able to support the entire tank up on bridges. But there I had a problem where I was clipping cars into each other, and well, Pally Bridge doesn't like when cars clip into each other, so it just starts giving them momentum outside, and in an enclosed area something had to give, so the roads ended up breaking in unbreakable mode which I didn't even think was possible. Here I ended up giving them a bit more space and it helped a little bit, but they were still sort of breaking. But this was at least good enough I thought I could test to see if my theory would work and that the cars would actually be supported by the bridge. So just moving the wheel over to the bridge, you see it drops on it, and it works. The bridge breaks, but that's okay, because that's just because I stuffed the cars weirdly. It works though, and it actually supports it. So now it's just time to copy over the bridge a couple more times and copy the wheel over. And I'm connecting them together with just a few pieces of steel. And you'll see here it lands in the bridge, and it does get supported, but that clipping problem I was talking about before just gives random momentum and the entire wheel assemblies just start jumping around. At the time, I didn't exactly know what the problem was, so my solution was to try to flip around all the cars. And the difference here is that instead of the roofs of the cars hitting the ground or hitting the bridge, the wheels of the cars would be hitting the bridge. And it wasn't a perfect solution, but you see it was way better. The front wheel was like imploding in on itself, but the back wheel is at least stable enough. And you see here, they actually stay pretty nicely on the bridge, but after a certain amount of time, they still freak out and end up breaking it. So I put this over to the side, because I think at this point I knew what the problem was, and I needed separate compartments for each car. So that's what I'm working on here. And this prevents the clipping problem, because the cars can't interact with each other, so they can't clip into each other. And here you can see the roads were being supported by the car, which was on the bridge. So now I'm just creating a big ring of these shapes that I just made. And I didn't take into account symmetry, which I totally should have, and the thing came out not symmetrical. So I knew I was going to have to fix this in the future anyways, but it was at least good enough for an easy test. So now I'm just filling up all those little compartments with cars. And I'm moving some weight into the middle. And you see it actually does work. It supports itself and it's not jumping around anymore, so that's, that problem is at least solved. I just skipped ahead just a little bit. All I did was make the wheel symmetrical and I added some supports to the middle of the wheel so that I can connect this wheel to the other one that I just put there. That was all I did though. And now I'm connecting the two wheels together with just a few pieces of steel. And you see I put the monster truck on top of the first wheel. And the reason I did this is we're going to need some sort of force to rotate the wheels in the tank. And I'm going to do that with the monster truck. As it tries to drive, it's going to rotate the wheel backwards, which moves the entire tank backwards. And you see here how that works. And it's close to working the way I'd want, but I can make it a bit more efficient by adding a few springs really pulling the tank against the wheel. And this gives me a much more effective power transfer. So after doing that, you can see it actually can clear the little gap there. But that back wheel sort of just like dead weight. It's actually something we could fix pretty easily just by adding a second monster truck to that wheel and then making it a power wheel as well. After just adding in the assembly to do that and adding in the monster truck and really maxing out its stats so that it's ultra powerful, you can see the entire tank moves pretty well. Alright, and now two wheels didn't seem so tank-like, so I ended up deciding on four. And I would have gone for more than this, but the game was actually starting to not like this. I think the amount of cars that I had in the wheels was causing some real physics problems, and I was getting about 30 FPS at about 100% speed here with four wheels. Anything more than that, I was getting less than it, and it was kind of painful to watch, so this seemed like a good spot to go to. But you see there, it ended up working, traversing the train just right. It was actually even better than before, but that makes sense because we have more wheels able to push the tank forward. Alright, now with the wheels and propulsion system looking about right, I thought it was about time to give something for the weapon to actually sit on. I'm going to do that here with this weird arch looking thing from the first wheel to the back wheel. I'm just going to connect it all together with a bunch of steel X's just to keep it nice and rigid. And you see here, once I run it, it looks exactly, well, it looks a little different, but it behaves exactly the same as before, which is perfect. I wouldn't want it to alter the performance at all. So with this about done, it's time for me to revamp the island, 
just to give a bit more distance for me to launch something. So I'm just moving the checkpoint flags out of the way, expanding the island size to 135 meters, and deleting all the old bridges. And now I'm moving the split joints down, and I'm expanding the starting area for the tank. And you'll see the reason for this is that the tank starts completely on land and doesn't have to start partially on the bridge. And this surprised me a little bit. The tank can actually just support itself on three wheels. I guess it makes enough sense if you think about like the physics of it, but I don't know, it seemed kind of surprising. So then I'm just recreating that same bridge I had before. I don't know why, I just thought it kind of looked pretty. And then I'm just copying it over. And now I effectively have the same thing, but just bigger, which is exactly what I want. I want a lot of room to be able to launch something. And you see the tank can step down on the bridge just fine. So this is perfect. So now I'm moving over the flags for each of the monster trucks. The point in this is that I want to figure out the distance between each monster truck and then move the flags back over to the end, so that once the tank approaches the end, the monster trucks can perfectly hit the flags at the exact same time as they do here, and then it stops. And then the weapon can fire after that point. Now I wanted to actually get work started on the weapon. So here I'm just making some generic barrel. I had no idea how I was going to launch a car out of this, but I just figured <laughs> might as well get it on the board, see what I can do with it later. So I'm just going to use some piece of steel to temporarily get the shape down, and I'm using some X's in the middle just to strengthen it. And here I'm putting in a hydraulic. This is what's going to lift it up a little bit. So there I don't get all the movement I was looking for. So I just move the hydraulic back a little bit, moving it closer to the rotational point gives me less leverage but more movement. And here you can see I get like 60 degrees of rotation, which is actually too much. I'm looking for about 45. But if it's too much, that's okay because I can always just dial it down later. So I'm just adding in two platforms here, and what this is going to do is allow the car to load itself into the barrel. It seemed like the easiest solution to get it in is just to have it drive into the barrel, and I'm just using a split joint there to support it before the hydraulic goes. And now I'm putting in some roads to replace some of that temporary steel I had before, now that I'm sure I'm actually going to have the car drive in that part. And now I'm going for a double X design to support it, since the roads can only go half the distance that the steel could. And now the car can load itself in, and fly out the back kind of forgot to put the back road in there to stop it from moving, and also I forgot to put in a checkpoint to actually tell the car to stop trying to move. So after moving in that checkpoint to the back there, and adding in a road in the back, you can see the car loads itself in, and stops, and then the hydraulic goes. So I gotta change up the movement of things a little bit, I want the tank to move before it starts aiming, but this is at least close. And you see now the trucks get to the end, and it's ready to fire. So I just need some way to propel the car out of the barrel. And the easiest solution I could think of is just to have the car propel itself out of the barrel by driving really fast. So we're just having the car load itself in, and now it's completely maxed out and does a wheelie apparently when it gets loaded in. That's fine. And then it gets to the end, all the trucks hit their flags, barrel aims, and now it's time for the car to actually launch itself out. And it does have the power to do it, but it likes to do a wheelie so much it ends up forcing itself up against the roof of the barrel which slows it down. Now you see it did launch itself out there at the very end. It was actually a pretty decent launch, but I was thinking if I could get rid of that, I could probably make it go faster. So by just lowering the roof of the barrel a little bit, the hope is that it can't do a wheelie and that it won't force itself up as hard. And it'll be able to move a bit more efficiently. But that's not quite what happened. There I got a continuous acceleration like I was hoping for, but it was a lower continuous acceleration, which wasn't as helpful. So I decided to just get rid of this whole barrel design because it just it seemed like it was going to be really finicky to tune, even if it was going to work at all. So I just copied one of the wheels from the bottom. I'm moving the dune buggy inside, and the dune buggy is going to rotate around a lot, and at the last second I'm going to pull out a few segments of the wheel, and hopefully the dune buggy is going to fly out. So you can see the dune buggy's getting up to speed. And now I'm adding in those springs so that I can actually pull pieces of the wheel out. So I should just need to pull out two or three segments here. But now when it reaches the checkpoint flag, a bunch of them pull out, and it should be able to fly out. But it didn't there and it's for a reason I wasn't entirely expecting. So I turned down the braking on that dune buggy all the way it could possibly go, but it was still too much and it lost way too much speed before it lost the wheel. So even if I tuned that just right, I think it was still gonna be too slow when it was exiting the wheel. So I decided I didn't wanna go that route either because it seemed like it was gonna be annoying to tune and once I got it, it wasn't gonna work. But this is sort of a catapult design and I'm using a diamond hydraulic and the plan is once it gets to the end, it's going to fling this car over. It's not holding it too well, you can see it kind of throws it up and down a lot, but it does hold on to it long enough. So all the trucks get to the end, they hit their flags, and then it starts launching, but it doesn't get a lot of speed and it ends up holding onto the car way too long and flings it into the ground. So after moving the rotational point in a lot and replacing each segment of the diamond hydraulic with itself a diamond hydraulic, I figure I can probably get enough speed. Now the diamond hydraulics can track faster than a standard hydraulic and they can track to further distance. So that's why I like using them. In this case, I ended up moving in the rotational point a little too close 
So after just pushing it out a bit, you can see it holds onto the car well enough. It definitely doesn't have a very good grab on it, but the trucks all hit their flags. And this time it moves way faster, and it's good enough that it actually launched the car to the end. And I promise you this was actually my first try. It just happened to work perfectly and land right back where it started. The hydraulics were having a good time too, so clearly this was the perfect solution. So I'm just moving the dune buggy's flag over to the end, and I got rid of a bunch of the useless junk I put in before. And now the tank makes it to the end, and flings the car over, and actually just scrapes the flag. Alright, now with the weapon system working the way I'd want, I'm basically where I want to be. There's just a few more things I need to do to get this level exactly where I want it to be. One of the first things I did is move all of the checkpoint flags for the cars onto the cars themselves. This changes nothing about the way they behave, but it allows them to technically count as completed immediately, which means I can see the level completion screen at the end. I also redesigned the terrain a little bit just to give the tank a bit more of a challenge. So the tank still starts on its little island area, and then it immediately approaches a slightly slanted bridge. That bridge ends up going into a large flat area, which has a couple shapes on it. And these shapes I'm counting as like kind of rocks, and they're a bit tricky for the tank to traverse. Then I have a bit of a hill or step section, whatever you want to call it. And that goes into another bridge. This is even bigger than before. It actually has to support the entire tank at once at one point, but it slipped down a bit. And then this feeds into the completion level area, which I showed before. So the tank rolls onto the bridge, and has no problem getting on the bridge. Has a bit of trouble getting off, though. As you see here, they all sort of struggle a bit. And this makes sense, because slightly slanted up and transitioning from the bridge to the land means it's switching from the cars to the roads that the wheels attach to, the outer ring. So it basically has to step up like half a meter each time, which is a bit much to ask of it, but it gets it done. Then it gets over those rocks. Then it has to get on these steps, and it touches that bridge, but ends up getting lifted up because the other three wheels are sort of on a slant. But right as it starts getting over that last rock, it smashes down on the bridge, and it has a lot of trouble, but it ends up being able to support it. And when the entire tank is on the bridge, it pushes it down a lot, but it ends up working out. Pretty easily rolls off the bridge. All of the monster trucks hit their flags. And then it's time for the catapult thing. And this just launches the dune muggy right back to the start. And that's a level completion. So guys, thanks for watching. This is a bit of a long video to make, took a while to edit. So I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Feel free to leave a question or comment down below. But otherwise, yeah, until next time.